There are some instances where you may be ahead of us. For example, in the development of your, of the thrust of your rocket. After the, the Second World War, space, there may be America and Russia were locked in a continuous battle. But in order for both a battle between communist Russia and the free Western world, led by America. America believed itself to be superior to Russia in every way, and it believed Russia was technologically backward. In 1957, America watched in horror as the Russians sent the first Earth-orbiting satellite into space. The West was even more shocked when in the short space of four years the Russians had sent Yuri Gagarin into space. He was the first human being in space and to America's annoyance he was a Russian. This was a crippling blow to John F. Kennedy who had only recently become president. Already he had been humiliated by the communists been when he was trying to evade Cuba and during the Bay of Pigs fiasco. The Cuban Missile Crisis had only intensified the rivalry between America and Russia. For Kennedy, the solution was quite clear. No matter how much it would cost, no matter how difficult it would be, an American, not a communist, would be the first to land on the moon. On May 25th, 1961, President Kennedy made his famous speech to Congress, promising that an American would be on the moon within 10 years. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept. One we are unwilling to postpone. And one we intend to win. And so, the Apollo space program was born. The main aim of the program was to achieve the president's goal of reaching the moon in 10 years. NASA collected the best brains from around the country to work on the project. On the 27th of January 1967, the Apollo 1 spacecraft was undergoing a pre-flight test at Cape Canaveral. This first Apollo spacecraft mission was to send the Apollo spacecraft up and make a rendezvous with the final project Gemini, which was Apollo's predecessor. Three men were picked for this mission. Their names were Edgar White, Virgil Grissom, and Roger Chaffee. These three men were taking part in a training exercise in the command module of the Saturn V rocket that would be used to launch them into space later on. There was a voltage surge and a spark appeared in the cockpit The cockpit was filled with 100% oxygen and the fire grew up to five times as bigger than it would if the spacecraft had been filled with air. The three men rushed towards the door and tried to open it. But it was too late as the door had been melted shut. By the time NASA had opened the door, the crew were already dead. Below are some pictures of the burnt interior of the spacecraft. Apollo 1 has been described as one of the worst tragedies in spaceflight. There are various monuments that have been placed to remember the tragedy that was Apollo 1. On the launch platform, there are two plaques in memory of the three men who lost their lives in the fire. One reads, they gave their lives in service to their country in the ongoing exploration of humankind's final frontier. Remember them not for how they died, but for those ideals for which they lived. Whilst the other is, in memory of those who made the ultimate sacrifice so others could reach the stars, ad astra per aspera, to the stars through difficulty. Godspeed to the crew of Apollo 1. After suffering this almost fatal setback, 
NASA decided to make sure that all aspects of the future moon missions were thoroughly tested. There were no spacecraft Apollo 2 or 3. Apollo 4, 5 and 6 had no crew. This meant that if anything went wrong with the spacecraft, nobody's life would be put in danger. The missions were each fairly simple and straightforward. Apollo 4's main purpose was to test the Saturn V launch vehicle and then to test the Apollo Command and Service Module in orbit around the Earth. Apollo 5 was to test all aspects of the Lunar Module. Apollo 6 was the last mission that involved testing the Saturn V launch vehicle and Apollo spacecraft. All of the Apollo missions 46 were made to test for future manned missions so that there would be a smaller chance of anything going wrong in the manned missions. Apollo 7 to 10 were manned missions that were sent to test things even further in readiness for an actual moon landing. After the successful completion of, Apollo, of the Apollo 10 mission, NASA felt that they had completed all the necessary research to complete the President's goal. NASA now had the technology to put a man on the moon. And so, on the 16th of July, a crew consisting of three men Neil A. Armstrong, Michael Collins, and Edwin E. Aldrin Jr., more commonly known as Buzz, stepped into the Apollo 11 spacecraft. This was one of the most famous flights in the history of mankind. This was to be the first time ever that man set foot on a body other than Earth. The flight plan used in this 11th Apollo mission consisted of around about 13 steps. The enormous thrust from the Saturn V rocket launched the Apollo spacecraft into the atmosphere at a speed of around about 6,000 miles per hour. stage of the rocket detached at an altitude of 40 miles. So far, 2,000 tons of fuel had been used and the rocket's weight had decreased by two thirds. Seven minutes into the mission, the centre engine had now shut down. Mission Control had told Apollo that they were go for staging. Nine minutes into the mission, the four remaining engines had shut down. Mission Control had told Apollo 11 that they were go for orbit. After orbiting the Earth one and a half times, one of the engines started back up again for a short period of time. The third stage separation had occurred. This is where the commanded service module separated from the Saturn 4B rocket. The commanded service module rotated around to face the rest of the ship. It then moved in very carefully and locked on to with the lunar module. The command and service module, combined with the lunar module, were propelled to the moon. Ready, steady, go. The command and service module orbited the moon. 
Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin left the command service module and entered the lunar module, also known as Eagle. Eagle then detached from the rest of the spacecraft and it descended towards the lunar surface. The Eagle had landed. When they left, they climbed into Eagle. The top of Eagle flew off and the Ags and Pings guidance system fired the altitude thrusters to pitch the right flight path. Eventually, they intercepted the command module and docked together. After the men from Eagle crawled back into the command module, the Eagle was detached from the rest of the spacecraft. The command and service module travelled back to Earth. When the command and service module was about to enter the Earth's atmosphere, the men crawled up from the service module and to the command module. These two modules were now separated from each other by a large guillotine. The service module detached from the command module and flew towards the Earth. Heat shields were built in to stop the inside from heating up whilst the command module was flying towards the Earth. Also, three parachutes were deployed to slow the Eagle module down. Ready, steady, go! In 1969, NASA returned with a new Apollo mission. The objectives of the mission were to set up experiments called ALSEPs, which I will go into later, to take pictures of the moon, to collect samples of the soil, and to examine the Sophia 3 craft, which had landed on the moon for more than two years before. The ship had a crew of three men. Their names were Charles, Conrad Jr., who had the role of commander in the mission, Richard F. Gordon, who had the role of command module pilot, and Alan L. Bean, who had the role of lunar module pilot. The flight plan was exactly the same as the plan for Apollo 11. Apollo 12 was also the crew that placed the US flag on the moon. One year later, NASA were planning to make a third mission to carry humans to the moon. They were going to use a very similar flight plan to Apollo 11 and 12, and they would use a vehicle and spacecraft similar to Apollo 12. The mission objective was to land in the Frau Moro area of the moon, and like all of the other missions, they would take photographs, collect samples, and then set up various experiments called ALSEPs. This Apollo mission had a crew of three men, Jim A. Lovell, John L. Swigert Jr. and Fred W. Hayes Jr. Ready, steady, 